My ladies and gentlemen of the Brain Scratch fandom, have you ever asked yourself, gee, I wonder what would happen if I took my mobile phone and strapped it to my face? Well, look no further, because I have the answer. And the answer is strapping your phone to your face. <laughs> that sort of came out upside down, but this is the, well, <laughs> there's a bit of an identity crisis with this thing's brand because the, the, um, the product name in the email <laughs> that the guy who sent this to me gave was uh, the Ele Elegant VR headset, but at that name is nowhere on the box. It's the VR Shine Con. <laughs> Virtual reality glasses. New technology, new experience. Unfortunately, that's pretty much all that is there is on the outside of the box. So this Ashen style gizmo review is not going to include any sad onions. Sad onions are forbidden from the premise premises for the duration of this review, but it's a box. Boxes have things inside them, and as we know on YouTube, there is no higher calling than turning on your camera and opening a box in front of it. I have no idea what this is. There's a cleaning cloth for your phone, so that's pretty nice. I mean... I mean, I've got some fingerprints on my phone that, that, that tends to happen when everything is touch controlled. I hate fingerprints and I hate touch controls. Touch controls can go kill themselves. There is a user's manual in broken English. There's a virtual reality glasses shine con service thing, which I suppose is some sort of registration card. Uh, I'm not going to be using that. There was also a PDF file in the email from the guy who sent me this that was basically the user's manual without all of the broken English, so um, I don't have to walk this down the walk of shame and read out all of the broken English that's inside. No, they've, they've revised it. It's just that the, um, the instructions that came with the first run of these things um, was horrendous, horrendously translated. And then we have the gizmo itself, which is less a gizmo and more of a doohickey because there's no computer stuff inside this thing at all. There is, however, quite a lot of bubble wrap. Bubble wrap is the shit. Enough with the bubble wrap. What is the thing? The thing that we are examining today, the uh, VR Shine Con, virtual reality glasses, new technology, new experience, and um, make your dreams a reality. It's, it's all very fancy, but it's basically, um, it's like a very small, not very long distance set of binoculars that you stick your phone inside. And certain apps will have like, a split screen between your left eye and your right eye that shows off um, that shows off whatever you're looking at and it uses your phone's gyroscope feature to turn the image as it turns your head so you can watch 360 degree videos you can um, play first person games that have that two eye mode um, and you can do some other stuff with it. But before we get into how that stuff works, let's take a look at the unit itself to misappropriate a word that Ashens uses whenever he's reviewing technological tat. We have ourselves the eye holes. The eye holes are good. And we have a nose hole, which is my first complaint about this thing. This sort of has this really deep, rounded, and very sharp corner going on in there and basically unless you happen to have a very round nose that stops a certain um, distance below your eyes you're probably not going to have much in the way of nose comfort while wearing this in fact while I was using this earlier um, this sort of made my nose hurt inside of a minute and uh, that's the main reason I probably am not going to be using this much there is there, are, there is a dial 
a dial, a singular dial, not two dials, it's just one dial that sticks out of both sides. And that adjusts the distance between your phone and the lens. I keep it close because that everything else just blurs it for me. And there's also this, um, this dial on the top, which, as you can probably see, uh, adjusts the, dif the distance between the, the two eyes. Um, it, it, it's not, oh, uh, the, the strap was stuck between. Yeah, okay, that adjusts the dif distance between the two eyes. And as for the whole thing, it feels sturdy enough. Like, I could probably throw it at a wall and it wouldn't completely shatter. There's also this uncoverable plating, which, um, when you put your phone inside, your camera can stick out. Because there are some VR camera apps that use your phone's camera for this or that the other. Probably, like, um, AR apps, augmented reality, the kind of stuff that you get on, like, your 3DS and whatnot. Yeah, that, that's, that's probably what that's used for. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a whole lot of space on this thing. I have not bought a um, a uh, particularly good, um, well, you know, micro SD card for that. So uh, I, I don't have a whole lot of space to test out a bunch of stuff on. But apart from, you know, it... it <laughs> Whether or not you like this thing is really going to depend on whether or not you like the idea of having um, a 3D image in front of your face that your phone um, that your phone sticks into your eyeballs because that's there, there, there's no technology here and uh, I don't think this is even the um, this is even the uh, only device that does this. But in any case, you stick your phone in with these with these grips, and this is adjustable. They sort of pull out. They're, they're spring-loaded or something. It, it, the instruction manual says it can fit um, mobile devices that are three and a half to six inches. Um, I have my doubts about the six inches thing, but um, yeah, it fits pretty well. I, I'm sticking this in the wrong direction. Whoops! Gravity sucks. You're actually supposed to have this down on a table while you're sticking your phone in. But for the sake of showing how it works, I want to have it sitting up. And that means, yeah, mishaps are going to happen. Uh, unfortunately, the other design problem that I have with this sort of sticks out at this point. But uh, this thing right here, underneath here, this is my power button. <laughs> Um, yeah, you can see the issue with that. Um, in any case, I'm going to unlock my phone. And, uh, this is a cool thing about the Samsung, um, uh, Galaxy S5 and other similar phones. Fingerprint scare. Technology. Ooh. Yeah. In any case, the thing that you would use this with is an app called... Google Cardboard, or other similar apps. There are probably other apps and stuff that do this kind of thing uh, for the other types of phones, but uh, yeah, Google Cardboard. And basically what this does is, let's go to Cardboard Demos, which is the thing that comes with Google Cardboard if you don't download uh, another, yeah, that, that's Elegant. Elegant is the other <laughs> brand name that comes with this. But, um, Yeah, okay, so... And this is essentially what the, what, what, what the thing is supposed to work like. You get a different image for each of your eyeballs. And um, in order to actually show this, I'm going to have to pick up my webcam and stick it in front of the thing. But like, as you turn the phone, this is you turning your head right now, the image moves, and because there's two images, you get a 3D image. The 3D effect is kind of nice, actually, but uh, not all that wonderful. Like, I, I, I get a better 3D effect from some uh, 3DS games. But in any case, there's a number of different things that you can do with this gizmo. I'm not going to spend too long showing them off, because um, I only have 15 minutes to work with. YouTube, get your shit together and remove that copyright strike already. I mean, it's, it's been a week since they got back to us saying that, that, that it was a mistake. <laughs> Ugh.
Okay. But yeah, I have downloaded a couple of apps for um, for your viewing pleasure, question mark. So let's try one of them out. Tokyo VR is kind of lame. It's just sort of a 360 degree photo. photo. Um, so that, that that was kind of a waste of time and a bit of a disappointment. I was planning to do this whole thing where it's like, have you ever wanted to go to Tokyo? Well, now you can. And all you need to do is duct tape a mobile phone to your face. But no, actually it's just one single 360 degree photo and that's really lame. SeaWorld VR 2, on the other hand, is fairly nice. And and um, I'm going to pick up the, the camera again so I can show you what this is like. And let this basically stand for the entire thing uh, once it starts anyway. When you're actually using the goggles themselves, what you would pick is 3D VR. And you'd get the split screen with a pretty nice 3D image going on. However, um, since we are in fact not using that, I'm going to touch 3D so that you guys get only a single image. And essentially how this works is you're swimming, you are Rayman in scuba gear. Uh, I would assume that's that, that, that's what that is, right? That That's Rayman's feet in flippers? Yeah, you're Rayman in scuba gear and you're underwater. And there's a bunch of stuff swimming around. And as you move your phone like you can sort of wiggle your phone I think and your flippers will flip and you'll swim and you'll swim in whichever direction you're looking and if you look straight up that's the exit and if you stare at the exit too long the game turns off because the exit doesn't like you staring at it I suppose in any case that is pretty much the device you stick your phone in, it, it, it shows each of your eyes a different image, and you get a sort of quasi-VR situation going on. There are actually a surprising number of um, little apps for Google Cardboard type things that, um, that, that you can mess around with, so it's a nice little diversion, and I have to admit, it's a much more pleasant thing to do than I was expecting when this thing arrived in the mail. But, um, whether or not this particular viewer is worth it to you, I don't know. It will depend partly on whether or not you have a means of connecting a wireless controller to your mobile phone so that you can play games on it. Um, there are some games, um, a number of horror games, like first-person horror games, uh, simple ones, but um, they look nice, and I would have probably played more of them before doing this video if the thing didn't bother my nose so much. But, um, yeah... I, I'm looking very forward to playing that app called Chair in a Room, though, because I'm curious about that one. <laughs> what is it like to sit on a chair in a room? Have you ever wondered? Well, now you can know. All you need to do is strap a big hunk of plastic with a mobile phone inside to your face, and you can finally experience the, the majesty of sitting on a chair in a room. Yeah. In any case, there's some discount codes and stuff, um, or whatever, in the video description. I'll write up the whole shebang of what that's for and link you to different online links that you can buy this at, depending on what country you live in. Unfortunately, the, uh, the discount codes only apply to U.S. and U.K. buyers. So, if you're one of, like, I think the first 50 to use one of those codes, then you can get this thing at a discount. Uh, if not, well, you'll have to get it at full price, or maybe you can be really industrious and actually build yourself a cardboard headset to stick your phone in, because, um, yeah, the actual Google Cardboard app seems to assume that you've got a big hunk of cardboard with your phone inside strapped to your face, and that's... Wow. You know, I really want to see someone with an actual cardboard Google Cardboard headset on. <laughs> In any case, I like this thing. I can't really compare it to other headsets of its kind, uh, because this is the first one I've ever used. I didn't know these things existed before I was approached to do this video. So, yeah. My overall opinion? Uh, well, I rated a phone duct taped to your face out of 10. At least it's not a virtual boy.
<laughs> That's the only definitively good thing I can say about the concept. But you know, not to be completely negative, you can have some fun with this thing, maybe. But um, that depends more on you than, than, on, than it does on this. In any case, I will see you all later. Yes, this was a blatant filler video. And it's 15 minutes long, so I need to shut up now. Ah!